All right, now that you've figured out your tuxedo, you've decided on your shirt, you've picked your bow tie style, the next thing to consider is what shoes to wear. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the five different styles of formal shoes, and at the end, I'll quickly be going over some details such as socks and laces, and then finally talking about a couple things to avoid. Formal shoe number one is a patent leather Oxford. An Oxford shoe is a specific type of shoe that's created with what's called a closed lacing. All this means is that the flaps of the leather that contain the lacing eyelets are sewn under the vamp as opposed to on top of it like you would see in a derby shoe. The visual effect of this is that it almost looks like a single piece of leather, which appears very simple and elegant, and why the Oxford is considered such a great formal shoe. The patent leather Oxford is going to be the most formal of the five shoes we talk about here. So if you're wearing a classic two or three piece tuxedo and your dress code is very formal, this is an excellent choice. Now for an even more elegant look, you can go with what's called a hole cut shoe. While an Oxford has the general appearance of being a cut from a single piece of leather, the hole cut on the other hand is cut from a single piece of leather. The result is a very clean, refined and elegant look that is both sophisticated and very stylish. Formal shoe number two is a plain leather Oxford. This is going to be a small step down in formality from the patent leather Oxford due to the fact that it is not as shiny. Ideally, your plain leather Oxford does not have a cap toe or any type of broguing, which are perforations in the leather. However, it's not the end of the world if you do have a cap toe it'll just knock the formality of the shoe down a little bit. Like the patent leather Oxford, you could also do the plain leather Oxford as a whole cut for some added elegance and sophistication. This type of shoe is a great choice for anything black tie, black tie optional, or semi-formal. Formal shoe number three is the opera pump. The opera pump is a very specific old school style of formal shoe. It's different from a loafer in that it has a deeper cutout, which means you're gonna see more of the sock. The most distinctive feature of the classic opera pump is the bow. However, there are more modern versions with a single strip of fabric, if you happen to like the style, but aren't necessarily feeling the bow. The opera pump is elegant and very classic, and if you want that vibe for something black tie, this is the type of shoe you should consider. Formal shoe number four is the Belgian shoe. This is a very unique and quirky style of loafer known for its small and distinctive bow. The original comes from a small shop in New York City, but there are a variety of other brands that also make this style today. If you plan to wear a full tuxedo and like the loafer style, but not necessarily the opera pump, the Belgian shoe, especially in a patent leather, is a great alternative. Because of its uniqueness, the Belgian shoe is also a very natural choice for semi-formal, cocktail attire, black tie optional, and creative black tie dress codes, though in each of those scenarios, you may consider a plain leather or suede version as they are less formal in appearance than patent leather. Formal shoe number five is the velvet slipper. This is the most informal of the five formal shoes we're looking at here. And some people will tell you to never wear velvet slippers outside of your own home. However, I think that's very outdated advice. A velvet slipper is an opportunity to have a little fun they come in a variety of colors and often with some sort of embroidery, which is great for a monogram or something that shows off your interest and personality. Because these are the least formal of the formal shoes, I do not recommend wearing them with a full tuxedo. A velvet slipper will look best for cocktail attire, black tie optional, or creative black tie. Those are the five types of formal shoes. Now let's go over some details, including socks, laces, and a couple things to avoid. Most traditional sock to wear with formal wear is a black silk over the calf sock. It's got a translucent appearance, giving it a very elegant look. Silk socks can be a little pricey, not to mention difficult to find. Not a big deal as any thin black sock will do the trick. Laces obviously should be black. The most classic formal and traditional lace would be a satin lace. However, a waxed cotton lace is also completely acceptable. You'll see both round and flat waxed cotton laces and you'll always want to choose the round as it looks more formal. Finally, two things to avoid when it comes to formal footwear. Number one, do not wear square-toed shoes, shoes that are boxy, or shoes that have a rubber sole. They look cheap and they do not match the polish and elegance of formal attire. Number two, do not wear boots. Although there are boots that are called dress boots, they do not match the level of formality of a tuxedo or an outfit with a dinner jacket. So that wraps up this overview of formal footwear. If you have any questions, let me know.